Mahler is practically all made of cliches, and the wonder of Mahler is what he does with these cliches, that they all come out so fresh and so personal, that there is not one of them that doesn't sound like Mahler every minute. But it's only in the fantastic and incomparable last movement that Mahler's cliches finally do turn into gold. He starts this last movement in a series of cliches that are reminiscent of church music. You can practically sing the words of Abide With Me to the tune that emerges at the beginning of this movement. It's no longer simply the death of tenderness or the death of simple pleasures or the death of urban pleasures, but the death of life, death itself. mad, sarcastic version of the cliché that we heard in the third movement has now been metamorphosed into one of the most divine phrases in all Mahler. About four minutes into this movement, he changes abruptly to a whole other kind of religiousness, which is now Eastern, a kind of very spare, Zen-like meditation. It's as though he's trying on, for size, disembodiment. He's trying to see what it would be like 
to be disembodied, to be away from reality, to be part of the universe, to be molecular instead of to have an ego, or to have an identity, a name. The orchestration becomes extremely bare and almost cold. In fact, utterly cold. It seems to be suspended in a kind of ether. Uh, the movement is barely discernible. The space between the lines is enormous. And it is the closest thing in music, in Western music, to the Eastern notion of intense transcendental meditation. But he's not yet ready to accept this cold solution, this drama, this nothingness. And so he breaks out again with this bitter, resentful, passionate clinging to life. 